Hey, Sam here, and today I'm going to share some of my absolute best stuff on um, tracking progress. Hey, Sam here, and today I'm going to share some of my absolute best stuff on bodybuilding. Some of the most useful stuff that you'll get in all my material, and it's about tracking progress. Whether that's just a body transformation, or even more important, in a contest prep. So I'm going to show you how to track progress objectively, whether it's losing body fat or whether it's gaining muscle without getting too out of condition. I'm going to show you some of the extra methods that I use that aren't always used when these things are covered and stay with it till the end. You're going to learn the exact targets you're shooting for if you're looking to compete and what to not go beyond if you're gaining and just how to see that you're on, on track overall, which is what makes the decisions easier to make as you go along to keep making progress. So a lot of people will do weigh-ins, take pictures, and I do that as well. It's really important. But they're not so objective because the lighting that you're under, the conditions the photo was taken under, can make a lot of variables in how the picture will turn out um, that will change week to week if you're tracking this week to week, which is what I'd advise. Same thing with scale weight. It can fluctuate a lot throughout the, throughout the day, depending on how much food is in your system, how hydrated you are, all that kind of thing. And then it can vary day to day and week to week, depending on all sorts of factors like assistance that you're you're employing um, and and what training phase you're in, all sorts of factors so something that i found a little bit more objective to keep track on these things and measure in an ob objective way is the tape measure and the calipers so i use these uh, weekly on myself and with others as one of the signposts that lets me know what's going on and what direction we need to take the program in next for the following days and weeks so I'll start with the tape measure. This is very consistent because unless you're pumped right after a workout, the, um, the diameter of all the different body parts, sorry, the circumference of the different body parts should be about the same. It doesn't vary as much as, as your weight or pictures from the lighting, stuff like that. So what you want to measure is calves, thighs on both sides, arms flexed, forearms, the chest measurement, the waist measurement and the neck measurement. I'm going to break the, down the detail here because this is what makes it consistent. So you do it in the morning when it's way before your workouts, so there's no pump left over in particular body parts. And you identify that you're doing it on the same spot on your thighs, same spot on your calves. So I would do, just do the thickest point on my calves and then low near the knee, right bang in the middle and right at the top near the hips on the thigh to make sure that I'm getting the same place each time. It doesn't matter exactly what place, but the important thing for consistency and um, having having nothing throw this off is that you're getting the same place each time. This becomes a little bit more tricky on the, um, the waist and the chest. So what I suggest is that you breathe in like, like this and flex when you do the chest measurement at the widest point, and then it's always going to be in that fashion and you can, you can judge it that you're measuring the same thing because it'll vary a lot depending on how tensed up you are and how, how much your rib cage is expanded from your lungs being full. So I breathe in and do the widest point. And then with the waist, I wouldn't vacuum or suck in. I wouldn't press out either. I'd just stand up perfectly straight until the stomach is flat and then just measure around the thinnest point where it's where it's at its flattest without me sucking in artificially and I'll do it like that. And then the neck will stay about the same, but make sure that you get it kind of on the neck and not into the traps. So like just above the, the, the collar line, if you're wearing a proper shirt. So what you're looking for is basically muscle gain without extra, extra fat gain. So what is an indicator of extra fat gain is the neck size going up loads, but even more so the waistline. It'll go up a lot on the thighs, but less so on the arms as you go in. So what you're looking for if you're in a gaining phase is that you're, you're gaining around the chest measurement, the arm measurements, the calves, and a lot more on the thighs, but it's not getting crazy on the thighs and it's not gaining absolutely loads on your neck and on your waist. And you basically calibrate to that. On the way down, when you're cutting, you're getting in shape for photo shoot, holiday, competition, whatever. It's, this, it's sort of this in reverse where you're looking for losses on the next size. Mm. 
on the waistline and on the thighs where most people carry more fat but you're looking for all the other measurements to stay as close to what they were at the upper end as possible so you're looking for for those ones i mentioned to decrease while while things like the arms the calves the thighs especially at the lower point are staying roughly stable the chest will go down a bit we carry a bit of fat on the on the back but we want those roughly the same and not decreasing as much as things are rapidly decreasing on the the waistline and the neck and that's what we're looking for we calibrate to that that's what we're looking for with with the tape measure now even less frequently used is the skinfold calipers so this is a really simple set you can pick this up for about five quid or ten dollars on amazon or wherever you shop and it just takes a piece of um piece of the skin like that and then you read off on the other side what the millimeter measurement is so usually this will come with an instruction book and they'll give you a bunch of sites to do and then some calculations to do to figure out your body fat percentage now i don't recommend that you do that there's absolutely no need to know the body fat percentage you just need to know what the millimeter measurements are on certain sites and see that they're going down at a good rate i would suggest half a millimeter a week to possibly a millimeter a week when you're really really cutting down um, provided that those other muscle measurements with the tape measure are staying as stable as possible so what i do with this is um, i measure the same point on my thighs the same point next to my navel the same point next to my hip a bit on my chest, the front of the arm, the back of the arm, and the lower back. You can do the lower back on yourself if you just take a section of skin, clip on, and then turn and read off the measurement in the mirror. So you can do all of this on your own. It's only really under your shoulder blades if you get someone else to do it, if you want to check there as well. And I write all of that down in my weekly, my weekly check-in, and I compare it to the week before that those are going down. Now, now to get the same spot, it's handy if you've got like a mark on the skin or or the exact point next to your navel, navel to keep that consistent. And you're looking to pinch, starting your fingers about an inch and pull in and you hold it like that. So it's all squished down as this clips on like that. And then you wait for it to settle and you read it off at that point. That's how you do it the same each time and you do it in those same spots as far as possible and note it all down. And what you're looking for, on the way up when you're gaining is to have some kind of limit in mind that you won't let certain sites go above a certain millimeter reading. I would suggest that if you're really hard bulking, you still probably shouldn't let any of these measurements go above about 10, possibly 11, but I would say 10 millimeters on say anywhere on the abs, um, certainly on the thighs, like less than 10, so less than a centimeter. And um, as you come in, you're going to use the, you're going to be able to see which parts of your body are coming in faster so you can do this on your glutes as well just just on the lower part of your your glutes and um, write all of that down and what you're looking for is them to come six millimeters five millimeters by that point you're looking pretty ripped if if the highest measurements everywhere are kind of five or six millimeters that's very good and that's actually sustainable long term so even if you're trying to maintain like an awesome physique and looking ripped you can use this to stay on track and me measure that you're about the same at that kind of level but you'll see that certain points go a lot lower than others so one or two millimeters on the arms you're probably still going to be like five millimeters on the abs six or seven on the glutes and the lower back but here's the secret, and I got this from uh, from Dan Duchesne, the bodybuilding guru who brought a lot of different technologies into bodybuilding. In his book, Body Opus, or Underground Body Opus, Dan Duchesne, he said that the target for competing and elite level conditioning would be no more than four millimeters anywhere on the body. And that's what I shoot for and achieve for every time I compete. And that's what you can measure yourself getting down to by measuring subcutaneous fat with the skin folds on this and tracking it. So you can determine from your numbers week to week with the tape measure and the skin fold calipers, whether you're going too slow, going too fast, where you're going to put more exercises in, um, which, which parts aren't responding. And then when you have different 
preps or different cuts that you did year to year, like in your data, you can know what to expect a bit better on the journey, which is why I always recommend doing doing like a dry run of this before you ever compete. So before you ever compete, just get shredded one summer for fun or get ready for a deadline for a photo shoot and then you'll know your numbers and you'll know that you're you'll know your rate of progress for being able to calibrate everything that you do in a contest prep where it matters to that. But these are the tools you're using. They're very, very reassuring when you're like all tired and, and you're doubting things and your eye and interpretation of things isn't on point now because you're now two weeks out. You've got your numbers. They're, they're much more objective than this than, than what you're seeing in the mirror or on the scale. And they are one of the best parts of how I work. So I've been, been very excited to share this today. And if you find this useful or have any questions about it in particular, put them in the comments. If you want more detailed explanation of how to get really shredded and compete, definitely consider subscribing and uh, look to the next slide for a few more of my videos. Cheers.